So I think that the Nazarenes were one group they should they wanted to get rid of. So and individuals and things like that. And I think you know it's not all the this is just the information I could get public. I mean I think that there is an oral tradition, a u r a l tradition with the ONA of things that, and I know that exists within Crowley as well, the OTO things that they talk about that aren't written down. But uh, I do think that they there's just so much writing about who they will get rid of and what's the benefit, right? So like if there's a journalist that's causing problems, get rid of him. That'll advance our way. Things that are in our way politically. Um, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talking about who they want to get rid of. But you have to like get rid of to go up somebody who's like the fourth or fifth level of the ONA's septenary way. That means that they've conducted an a sacrifice, an opt for sacrifice. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah, and it's not random killing, guys. It's it's them definitely uh, testing you. They want to test you, and they want to find out whether or not you're worthy of sacrifice. And it's not like they just kill those that they feel are meek or meager or anything. You've got to show your own uh, willingness to be the sacrifice, or not really willingness, but the traits of uh, of a traitor of. Uh, you know, I, I just found it very fascinating how much effort they put into selecting who they would sacrifice and who deserved to die. Right. No, it, it is remarkable. And I think it was like if you're arrogant, if you, you know, did this test, if you came out feeling that if they thought that you were less than you had low character or something like that, then you were the perfect person to get rid of. You're the pers- first, you know, human calling in action. You would be ideal. So, you know, that's weird. And it, it's weird how it ties into kind of what's happening with the smiley face killings where these young men are out there. There's an overproportion of them who are Christians and also that they're usually out at bars. So maybe that's like an environment where somebody who was thinking like on ONA terms would see somebody acting drunk or being too loud or being a slob or something. And then they're like, OK, that's the person we're going to off tonight. We're going to dry, ritually drown them and throw them in a river because yeah. they believe in this kind of typhonic worldview. The, the, there's this, the trident to them is also important. There's something called the tricycle, which is also a very dark kind of symbol. Uh, that's a more recent element of the ONA. But it's the idea that this there's gods in the in the water underworld that, that uh, need to be placated, sacrificed to, but also it's the old kind of battle between the lesser gods and the gods up on olympus right so there could be that same kind of thing today where they're warring against the living god and their dark gods are underneath the water or something like that it is interesting like the newer the fourth version of uh, stranger things included kind of a portal at the bottom of a deep river so right. it's like oh that sounds just like the ona so maybe they started reading something like that mm. You can find that in the rituals of the Church of Satan as well. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they they say if you wanted to call upon Cthulhu, uh, which was one of Lovecraft's gods, or those that don't know, uh, that you needed to do it off of a, a oil rig. And there there are a lot of weird things going off the edge of oil rigs uh, as we start to look into that. 